Good morning, Boker Tov, everyone. You know, last night, uh, SpaceX launched a rocket uh, to our outer space with four astronauts upon the spaceship. And this morning, Moderna announced that, thank God, there's a second vaccine on the horizon, which has a 94% uh, success rate, uh, on top of the one that Pfizer announced, which has a 90% success rate. And all of this, of course, is great news. And as we start to eye the beginning of the end of the pandemic, God willing, as in December, God willing, the first responders, those who have been sacrificing every day by being in the hospitals, the nurses, the doctors, the uh, ambulance drivers are gonna get the first doses of this vaccine uh, as a way of protecting them because they have been on the front lines protecting all of us, thank God. Uh, we start to think about how life will turn, return to normalcy. But that's the question, what is normal? You know, for some people, and uh, everyone maybe on some level, uh, the past seven months had a hidden blessing. And that is that during normal times, what we call normal, we have social pressures to conform to certain standards. Uh, but in the past seven months, we were able to follow our inner rhythm. Uh, more freely. We were able to realign with our true selves without the social pressures and expectations that we constantly feel pressured by. And many people have told me, you know, it's nice to spend more time with the family and not have to run to so many parties and social events or go on so many business trips just to have a meeting for a few hours. I realized I could do those meetings over Zoom on the internet. And when life goes back, I'm not going to run as much to these events, to these social gatherings, or to these functions, or to these business trips. I'm gonna spend more time with my wife, with my husband, with my children, with myself, doing things that I enjoy doing, being true to my inner self. We all feel this tug of war between what we feel like is true to ourselves, which is our inner voice, our soul, and then what the peer pressure and society places upon us. And as we begin to transition, God willing, back to normal life, which we're very grateful to be able to do and to be able to get rid of this pandemic, which has cost us so much, so much life and health and financial ruin and mental distress on so many people. We are very grateful for these vaccines, but at the same time, we see the door closing on this period. And we have to ask ourselves before the doors close, what are we going to hold on to from this period of time? In this week's Parsha, we have the story about the twin brothers, Yaakov and Esav, Jacob and Esav. And we all know the story how Jacob was at home preparing a stew and his brother Esav, Jacob was at home preparing a stew and his brother Esav comes home and he says, he was coming back from the field and he says to his brother, pour that lentil soup down my throat because I am tired, I am exhausted. And of course, Jacob says, I will give it to you on the condition that you give me a birthright, which he sells to him at that point, which sets the stage for Jacob later receiving the blessing from his father, Isaac, as the firstborn. But the question the commentaries hone in on is, he says, pour it down my throat because I am tired, because I am exhausted. Shouldn't he have said, pour it down my throat because I'm hungry? And our commentaries uh, explain that there's two reasons why we eat, and we all know this to be true. Sometimes we eat because we're hungry, but sometimes we eat because we are emotionally drained and tired. We feel exhausted, we feel weary. What do we feel weary from? Life. Sometimes life exhausts us, and sometimes the reason why life exhausts us is not because of the physical strain. You could have a construction worker who comes home feeling happy, and you could have someone who works in an air-conditioned office that didn't have to move out of his leather seat all day, and he comes home exhausted. Why? Because there's something called cognizant dissidence, which means when we're not living our true selves, we're putting up a facade, that is the most exhausting thing. And so Asa says, give me some of that red soup, pour it down my throat, which is the way an animal eats, not a human being, because I feel like an animal. I don't feel human. I feel exhausted because my life is spent doing things that are immoral, things that are contrary to my true self, and I know it, and I feel it, and therefore I feel hungry all the time. And this is the lesson for all of us from this week's Parsha. When we live a life that's true to ourself and true to our values, then we find inner peace and fulfillment. There's a story told about this rabbi who didn't see one of his congregants in the synagogue for a long time, and he approached him one day and he said, 
I haven't seen you in synagogue. Why don't you come to study and to pray and to learn? And he said to him sarcastically, Rabbi, you know, in today's day and age, we could, with the help of an airplane, we could fly like a bird. With the help of a car, we could run like a deer. With the help of a submarine, we could swim like a fish. And today he would say, with the help of a, a spaceship rocket, we could go to outer space. But he said, Rabbi, with all of this uh, with technology and advancement, uh, do we really need a Bible, a Torah that was written thousands of years ago and given uh, to a group of Jews in a desert uh, who had just come out of slavery? And what relevance does this book have to my life? And the rabbi looked at him and said, you say you could swim like a fish with the help of a submarine. You could run like a deer with the help of a car. You could fly like a bird with the help of an airplane. But tell me, can you also walk like a man? That's the question for us. Thank God we have technology. Thank God we have science. Thank God we have tremendous progress. We're grateful to live in a day and an age where we, can, where we could have a vaccine to protect us from this pandemic. Unlike those who unfortunately died during the Spanish flus, flu and other tragic pandemics. And we're gonna witness the greatest rollout in, in the history of the United States of uh, medical distribution of this vaccine. But at the same time, we have to ask ourselves, can we live like human beings? Has all of this progress made us happier in the sense that we are living more fulfilled lives, more loving lives, more meaningful lives? Are we happier today? Do we have better relationships in our families and our friendships? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. Where is the inner moral progress? And maybe this pandemic gave us some time to think about how we're going to achieve that in our lives, to live not only more scientifically and medically advanced comfortable lives, but inner joy, meaning, fulfillment, love, happiness, have better relationships, better marriages, better relationships with our children, with our fellow man, and as a society, live a more meaningful and fulfilling life. Have a wonderful day.